And hello and welcome uh, to this episode of Pizza Plus Coffee Equals Code. Uh, I am here with uh, Greenheart Games. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, my name is Patrick Klug. I'm uh, one of the co-founders. Uh, we made Game Dev Tycoon ages ago and for the last 10 years, or 9 years, <laughs> we've been working on a second game called Tavern Keeper. So, nice you have. Uh, what motivated the switch? Obviously, Game Dev Tycoon, very, uh, I guess, modern and uh, about game development. Now you jump over into a fantasy medieval setting. Uh, was that something you guys had planned for, like you said, nine years? What was the, the motivation there? I think the setting itself was just like we wanted something quirky and fun where we could like subvert some tropes. And fantasy is the perfect angle for that because like uh, whether you like D&D or, you know, Discworld or any kind of like on the spectrum of fantasy, uh, we're just big fans of the things that you can, the stories you can tell, and uh, it seemed like a fun thing to put a management simulation game in that setting. And then, like off the bat, just from playing the demo, the humor is there at the start. Like it's impossible to not mention. Is that, I guess, the the developers, you guys, is that your humor being put into the game? No, um, it was a huge focus for us because, like. You know, with management games, there's a lot of them already out there, and so you kind of take the best bits, and a lot of innovation is already there. With Tavern Keeper, it's definitely one thing we wanted to do is push the narrative more, push the story more, and uh, we really knew we needed to get a professional writer that that focuses on comedy, or not focuses on it, but is really good at this kind of like bite-sized, fun stories. And so I'm really glad to hear uh, that your impression is like that because a lot of work goes into that. And it's definitely not us uh, programmers doing that. We have um, a ride on board. And then when you look at a management sim like this, you have to balance multiple types of gamers. But in terms of the spectrum, you got your like, I just want to sit down and have a cozy game kind of people. And then you're, I'm going to know every single number in this game kind of people. So from a game development standpoint, how do you balance those sort of two ends of the spectrum? It's hugely complicated because uh, Tavern Keeper is a, is a systems game and that means there are like many different detailed simulations going on uh, from you know dirt and, and fire chances to sicknesses on staff and whatnot. And that sound, it is quite complicated but you want to present it in a very fun, easy going way. So if you have a player who doesn't care so much about the details, they can still enjoy and feel really immersed in it. But if you do get a player that wants to know every stat and every every detail of how the puzzle piece works together then that's there as well uh, there is a reason though it took us nine years to develop because it's just uh, if you add one system it can affect all the other systems it's not like it's just oh yeah on top of something it's interactive with everything that's already in the game and one of those things I think I saw in there was you know your build menu you've got I want to put this lantern I want to put this but then I want to put this shape I want to start building this object uh, and so I guess, can you talk a little bit about that sort of object building uh, element? Yeah, first of all, we're super excited about that part because like um, every management sim game, obviously you have to build. You have to build your rooms and whatnot, but we really wanted to give uh, players the opportunity to create their own things, not just place, you know, a bar and a tap on there. And so we have this whole mode, which is called design mode, that lets you place things from a single candle, but also simple shapes that you can kind of crash together and um, uh, the cool thing is you can build things and then share it with your friends if you want and uh, make your own props essentially and we, we honestly can't wait for, for players to do that. I guess in the, in the dev room I'm sure you guys have made a bunch of crazy stuff yourself. What's, the, what's something crazy you guys have already built? Well there is a, a divide between you know team members. Uh, my brother who is a coder and he's a co-founder of the company. When he tested it out I think he just took an arrow and placed it a thousand times and it just like had this, this ball of arrows essentially. And then you give the tool to our artists and they create the most amazing, <laughs> amazing looking thing. And uh, But it just goes to show that anyone can have fun. Like, you know, you can take, uh, I think the very first thing I did is I took a fork and I put it in the road and scaled it up to like this monumental size. And then I called my, my tavern a fork in the road. Uh, which you know I thought was very clever but anyway it, it, it was a fun thing to try so it uh, allows you to do whatever you want really you didn't need a writer for humor you've got <laughs> it <laughs> none of the puns are mine it's the only the one <laughs> um, so yeah I guess you've talked a little bit about what separates it from other simulator games uh, were you worried at all that you know it would just be too saturated of a market when you guys release into it or do you think you have enough of those separating elements 
there's always a sense uh, when you develop a game for that long that you see, because there were no tavern sims game coming uh, out when we started, right? But since then, many, many tavern games came out. And there's always a sense of like unease when it happens at the start, because like, oh my gosh, are we taking too long? Which we definitely were, but you know, that's a different story. Um, but to answer your question, no, we're not worried because I think we've made something quite unique that wouldn't exist in other companies and couldn't exist. And uh, some of the games that came out actually showed us what our direction, like we showed us what we wanted to either lean away from or, or do a bit more of. And that was quite nice. I do feel like Tavern Keeper offers something for players who have played other games like that before as well, but also something new, so I'm, uh, I'm optimistic. And then so if you had to sell your game, I don't know, you know, a couple sentences to people who are listening, the, the last sort of like hook them in, how would you describe Tavern Keeper? Well, Tavern Keeper at the core is a humorous fantasy business management game where you control everything if you want to. But it also is a creative sandbox where you can create your own decorations and whatnot. And finally, it's a it's a fun, bite-sized, humorous storybook, uh, interactive storybook. So three games in one. I think uh, if you like the sound of any of that, you should definitely check it out. And then if they did want to check that out, you have uh, links. We'll probably put them here-ish somewhere. Yeah, um, this coaster, actually, I'll give it to you. That's Hi. yours. Uh, <laughs> Tavernkeeper.com is our website, but uh, we are launching on Steam next year. So the best place to go is uh, on Steam. Uh, Look for Tavern Keeper and Wishlist, and uh, we can also sign up to our newsletter, and uh, we'll sign. We send you cool things through our newsletter. Well, thank you very much for chatting to us. It was a pleasure. Yes.